What's going on guys? I recently got a comment from a viewer. That viewer's name is Siege Pickle. He asked if I could do a Cloud9 or a Phase logo. So of the two logos, I'm choosing to create the Phase logo because I like to watch Nick Merckx and he recently joined that clan. Therefore, I'm gonna go ahead and go with that logo. As always, you guys can download this design in the link below in the description. But if you guys wanna learn how to do it, you guys maybe want to change some colors, change some specifics about the design. Keep watching this video. I'm going to show you exactly how it's done. And maybe you'll learn a little bit about Razor Synapse 3. All right, guys. So here we go with the phase design. All right. So we're going to start off with the base color like the background color and you can make this whatever color you want just make sure that it kind of contrasts with your phase logo and it's not a very similar color that way the logo stands out from the background i'm going to click on these three dots and i'm going to turn that into a wave layer and what i'm going to do is i'm going to select all of my available lighting and i'm going to click on my color drop down and i'm going to turn this into a three tone wave so you got three nodes here. And I'm gonna leave the sides black and I'm gonna turn this middle one into a red. That looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and click off of that. And I'm gonna just angle this wave down at 180 degrees. I'm gonna slow my speed down on this to about 10. And I'm gonna hit save. So unselect all of your keys. And now I'm just gonna hold control and start selecting random lighting across my Razer devices. If you have extra Razer devices for Razer Synapse 3, you can do this as well. Okay, so there I've selected a bunch of random lighting on my entire system. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change some of the values a little bit. So I might change my speed up to 11. I'll change my width to about 110. And I'll change my angle at about 215 degrees. That looks good and I'll hit save. And now I'm gonna do that same thing and just kind of add a, some variety and some, some different changes in the background lighting. So once again, I'm gonna hold control, select a bunch of random keys and change some values. So there again, I selected a bunch of random different keys and I'm just gonna change some values again. I'll change my speed to eight. I'll change my width to 105 and I'll change my angle to the right side this time. Might even make this like a 126, almost horizontal. I'm gonna do that one more time. Select some random keys, change some values. So there I've selected some more random keys. I'm gonna change my speed to nine, change my width to 120. I don't know, get a little crazy. And maybe I'll angle this one up at 26. That looks good and hit save. So that looks good to me. Now we're gonna focus on the keyboard a little bit. Now we're gonna work on the phase logo. What we're gonna do is we're gonna break this out into sections. So in the logo, you kind of have like a top bar. We'll call that the top. You're also gonna have like a middle part of the T and then you got a, a branch going off to the left and a branch going off to the right. So first things first, I'm gonna name our first wave uh, background. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a new wave layer. So go ahead and click on wave, double click on the name, and I'm going to name this logo top. Now we're going to work on just the top part of the T. So we're going to try and capture the zone that the top of the logo is going to go. We're going to select the middle of our keyboard section here, kind of like this. I'm going to deselect these keys here. I'm also gonna deselect the spacebar because it makes things complicated when you get to the lower branches of the logo. Before we touch our color, what we're gonna do is we're going to change our width to 200%. This is gonna be a scrolling logo, so the size of your color needs to be the size of what your logo is going to be. So ours is gonna be two times the height of our keyboard, so I'm gonna make it 200%. I'm gonna change my speed down to a slower speed, about four. Also change your angle up to zero degrees. So what we're gonna do is click on our color drop down, and we're gonna choose a five tone wave right here. 
On the far right, you're going to have an invisible node. On the far left, you're also going to have an invisible node. And towards the right side of your pattern here is going to be the top part of your logo. So we're going to make this second to last node here white. And we're going to make this node here uh, kind of like a gray. And this node we can delete. And we're going to bring this up. And what we're looking for is kind of like a one key height. So we're going to pinch this in quite a bit here. So you can see in the preview, the white part is about one key width. If you look at the logo, you can see that the logo kind of tapers off on the left edge. And what we're going to do now is we're going to duplicate this layer. And we're going to name this logo top two. We're going to select it and hold control and select off the left side of these keys, just like this. And we're gonna hit delete on those. After you've deleted out the left side, go ahead and hold control and double click on any of your edited keys. It will select all of the ones that are similar and click on your color drop down. And we're just gonna drag the left two nodes down a little bit until we have a two key thickness on there. So now, as you can see from our preview, it now has kind of a tapered effect in there. Now we're gonna click on our first effect layer that we made for the logo. We're gonna right click and we're gonna hit duplicate layer. Double click on that new layer and we're gonna name this middle. And then hold control and double click any of your edited keys. And we're gonna select the keys that we're gonna keep as our vertical part. So hold control and select some of these center keys in here. So I'm gonna select those keys right there. Once I have everything else highlighted, I'm gonna hit the delete key. So now you can see I just have that center section of my logo left. I'm gonna hold control and double click on my affected keys. Click on your color drop down and drag these left two nodes all the way down. As low as you want your lighting to go. So that looks good right there for me. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to select this right side, all of the affected keys on the right side here. And I'm going to change this to be a little bit shorter just because in the logo there is a tapered effect at the bottom of the logo. So once I've done that, I'll just kind of look at the preview. Now you can see there's kind of a tapered section to the bottom of the logo. So now you can see we kind of have a T on the keyboard. Now we just got to do the left and right side of the logo. So now what I'm going to work on is the bottom left branch of the phase logo. To begin this, I'm going to click on logo top number two, and I'm going to right click and duplicate that layer. Go ahead and select this new layer and hold control and select all of your affected keys over on the right side and hit the delete key. Now on the left side of this logo, you can see it's a little bit shorter than the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold control and delete out the effect on these far left keys as well. So now I'm gonna select all of my affected keys that are in there, click on my color drop down, and I'm gonna just drag this whole thing down a little bit all of the nodes I'm going to drag down until it's about midway through my phase logo so I think there I found my sweet spot that looks good for me I'm gonna go ahead and hit save now there's just one more part that we have to do and for this I'm going to right click on logo top and I'm gonna duplicate that layer the layer that we just edited I'm gonna double click on that and I'm gonna name that one bottom left This new layer we just added in, I'm gonna double click on that and name it bottom right. Select this new effect layer and same thing here, we're going to hold control, select the left half of our design and hit the delete key. Now we're just working with the right side. Go ahead and click on your color drop down, and we're gonna move the section way down. Once again, play around with it until it gets right in the spot where you want it. So that looks pretty good to me. I think I'm gonna finish the logo right there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up my effect layers a little bit. Click on this file button right here to add a group. 
And then in this new group, double click on that and we can just name this logo. And now all five of these layers that we just created, we can go ahead and drag these into this new file and it will save all of our effect layers into that folder. That makes our effect layers over here on the left a lot cleaner. Now we're just gonna do the phase word. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that wave and we're gonna name this new one to parentheses phase in parentheses. Go ahead and click on this new layer and we're going to select the F key. Click on your color gradient. Choose a five node pattern. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is angle your wave up at zero. Speed can stay at 15. Everything else can stay the same. We're gonna go ahead and edit our color now. The far right node, I'm going to make blue. The next one inside, I'm gonna leave it green. The next one to that, I'm gonna to change to yellow. And this second node here, I'm gonna make red. I'm just gonna drag all of these close together over here just like this, maybe space them out just a little bit. Now this far left node here, we're gonna make invisible, just like that. That looks like it's going a little bit too fast to me. I'm gonna click on this and I'm going to change my speed down to, let's make it four and hit save. That looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and copy my F key, click off of it and I'm gonna paste it into the A key just like that. Go ahead and click off of that key and then back onto it. And click on your color drop down. And we're just gonna drag this whole rainbow section down our color bar just a little bit. So we're gonna drag everything down. The blue is gonna be right in here. We're gonna add a new node and we're gonna make this new one invisible. Just kind of space them out in, in this little bar. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Now you can see when the wave goes to start, the F key will light up. And then when that one's done, the A key will light up. And we're gonna do this for all four letters. Real quick, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a two second pause and hit save. And I'm gonna go back into my F key as well and put a two second pause on that. So it'll spell out the word phase, it'll give a few seconds, and then it'll start it again. So make sure you copy that A key and then paste it into the Z. Go ahead and drag your color bars down a little bit more. Just like that, that looks good. I'm gonna hit save. And once again for the E key, copy your Z and paste it into your E key. Go ahead and click on your nodes and drag those down the color meter one last time. And now, as you can see, our phase word is now done. So it's gonna cycle through the wave, F-A-Z-E, and then it's gonna pause for two seconds. And then it's gonna start the word over again. Now all that's left to do is add the audio meter if you want it on your keyboard. So go ahead and click on that audio meter effect layer. Click on that new layer and we're gonna hold control and we're gonna select the left keys on your keyboard and I'm gonna select the right side too. So I have the left side and right side lit up. I'm also going to add my, the left side of my Razer Nomo speakers and the right side. So I'm gonna have the left of my left speaker, the right of my right speaker. And I'm also going to hold control and select my Razer mouse. So now when there's audio on my keyboard, these sections will light up white. To make it white, go ahead and click on your color drop down. Choose a single color, which is a two node pattern. This first node we're gonna make invisible and the right node we're going to make white. So what this does is at low volumes, it will be invisible, we'll be able to see the background. At high volumes of audio, it'll be really bright white. On my computer, it always works better if I check the auto button and I have decay all the way down. This is what looks good to me. Play around with it. You guys will get a feel for what you guys want. That looks good. I'm gonna hit save. Now I'm gonna play a little bit of audio and test out the audio meter.
that's going to do it for this video guys if you like the video make sure you hit that thumbs up button hit that subscribe button and the bell icon that way you guys see when i upload future videos as always you can follow me on my social media accounts instagram and twitter i'm always putting up teasers of future videos so make sure you go and follow thank you guys so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys in the next one